Unimolecular reactions are sequential reactions. In the first step, you're going to have loss of a leaving group. This forms a carbocation. Now, if your second step is substitution, sorry, nucleophilic attack, then you get SN1. On the other hand, if your second step is proton transfer, you get E1. Since the first step is forming a carbocation, and a tertiary carbocation is most stable, chances are, in a unimolecular reaction, your substrate is a tertiary alkyl halide. Let's look at an example. Here's a tertiary alkyl halide, 3-chloro-2,3-dimethylpentane, and the stereochemistry is A, B, C, it's counterclockwise, with the lowest priority group on a wedge, so it's R. In any case, our first step is going to be loss of a leaving group. So we're going to get a carbocation. Chlorine's going to leave. And we get this beautiful carbocation. Now, to stabilize that carbocation, a protic solvent works really well. So, water is very often a useful solvent. And since the loss of the leaving group is your rate limiting step, you need all the help you can get. So you'll do this in water or in an alcohol, most likely. Okay, so now we've got our carbocation. And the next step is to react it with a base or a nucleophile. And really, Water can act as either. Here's the water acting as a nucleophile. This yields a pair of protonated alcohols, a racemic mixture. This is the retention product. It retains the original configuration. This is the inversion product. And it's 50% of each. Water will then come along and deprotonate it to make the alcohol. So. Here's water coming along and taking one of the protons from the oxonium, and that pair of electrons turns into a lone pair, and now we get the alcohol. Again, this is the retention product. And we'll also get water deprotonating on our inversion product. Very similar. Except now the hydroxyl group is on a wedge and the methyl is on a dash. So here we had first loss of a leaving group and second nucleophilic attack. This is the SN1 mechanism and we get a racemic mixture of the retention product and the inversion product. On the other hand, water can act as a base and it'll take always 
the more substituted beta proton to make the Zaitsev product. And the only stereospecificity is that you'll get the isomer that has less steric interference. This is your E1 product. So, when you use water or an alcohol, you'll get a mixture of SN1 products and E1 products. Now, if you want to favor the SN1, do it at a low temperature. And if you want to favor the E1 product, do it at a high temperature. But regardless, you're still going to get a mixture, no matter what. Say I react a tertiary alkyl chloride with sodium iodide in water. Well, iodide is a strong nucleophile. Strong nucleophiles favor SN2. However, this is a tertiary substrate, so it can't go SN2. Iodide has no function as a base, however. That means we're going to go SN1. So, we'll have loss of a leaving group. Producing a chloride ion and a carbocation, which is perfectly planar. In the second step, our iodide ion can attack from the front or the back with no preference, so we'll get a racemic mixture of the two different tertiary alkyl iodides. This is the one where the iodide attacked from below the plane, so it added on a dash. But because this carbocation is completely planar, the iodide could just as easily attack from the top to give you this enantiomer. Right, so you get a racemic mixture of substitution products in SN1. In this case, no E1 can take place because iodide is a non-base.